Hey everyone, Danielle here. I'm doing a solo playthrough of Keyforge Adventures, Fall of the House Gormengeist. This is a multiplayer scenario, um, but I am playing a solo. Alright, so the deck I'll be using is called Ka of New Melon. Um, the houses are Unfathomable, uh, Bobnar, and Sanctum. The deck list, if you're interested, looks something like this. So feel free to pause and take a closer look at the cards in each of these houses I'll be having in my deck. Um, but yeah, I'm going to keep this uh, card off of the play mat along with probably a bunch of other ones. Um, I have the, the token or reference card here on the side as well, along with three essence cards, which each player would start with when you're um, attempting this adventure. I also want to note that we have um, two large mansion cards. Um, we have Gormengeist Mansion, so let's go through that. This one says, at the end of your turn, Gormengeist steals one amber for each siphon in play. And it's basically any cards that have this icon, such as this, um, will mean we steal one more. Um, there's some uh, narrative here, flavor text. On the... Um, Amalgamator, oh my gosh, I hope I'm saying that right. This is an item specter. And basically, if Grand Stairway or Sealed Odium, which are mansion cards, if they are in play, Dark Essence cannot be drained. Each time a player is drained of Essence, attach that Essence to the Amalgamator. And when it has a number of Dark Essence attached to it, equal to the number of players plus one, in my case, it'll be two. Um, it's destroyed and the players win the game. So my goal of this game is to get um, uh, Amalgamator to Dark Essences and then I'll win the game. And it says whether you win or lose at the end of the game, flip this card and read the appropriate conclusion. So that's pretty neat. All right. So um, the back of this is pretty much the introduction. So feel free to pause. I'm not really one to, to read through much of the story. I'd like to get into the gameplay. Um, I mean, at least not in my videos, um, but yeah, I'll be placing these uh, kind of at the edges, top edges of my play mat. Um, we start with the Grim Reaper out. So that's this creature It's a robot specter creature with six power. Um, and if this were to leave the battle line, uh, I archive this. And if you're not familiar with adventures, archive is basically going to be the, um, the Gorm Gormengeist's hand. So uh, at the start of the game, you have the adventure deck, which looks like this. This is the card back for it. So you have all these cards I've pre-shuffled already. I'm going to have it right here. And then you actually draw two cards off of that deck and archive it. So I have that here. It will be placed up here off the play mat as well. And this will be the card. These will be the cards that Gormengeist will play um during its turn uh, speaking of mansion cards before i do want to mention that you start with two in play you start with grand stairway and it has this uh explore ability that an active player which would be me can do as long as i have uh the um, requirements met so it says explore if you are haunted and have three amber or more in your pool lose three and flip grand stairway so when it comes to the mission cards you always want to start and make sure that this is this symbol like this door symbol is face up and then you flip when it says to so i'm not going to do that I, I won't flip it and spoil that for you yet um, this is a placeholder card for a card that unfortunately did not make it into my box, but I am missing the card Endless Corridor, and then the flip side um, is, 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 a, is obviously part of the card that I'm missing. Um, but basically it says explore, discard two from hand, and if you do that, you play the top, uh, the top mansion card, and then you flip this card to see the other side. So the mansion deck is up here. All of the uh, mansion cards will have two sides to it. You will want to shuffle it so that you and, and, and have it so that they're facing up, meaning this symbol is always visible in every single location. Um, and then I'll just have this on the side. So apart from all that, um, you also need to make sure that out of the adventure deck, you set this into the discard pile. It's called it is time. So this just simply gets placed into the adventure discard pile. 
As part of setup, you would have also been instructed to remove these mansion cards, sealed oleum, non-stop alarm clock, grandfather clock, and bizarre wall clock. So these four um, mansion cards will be placed um, out of play for now. I'm assuming they come in at some point. So I think I've discussed all of the setup. Um, and I think I'll get right into it. As a reminder, I do have three essence cards. Um, I'm not sure if I mentioned it actually. Each player gets three at the beginning of the game. And at, at some point, you'll realize that we have to um, give essences. It, they will basically be siphoned. And if we happen to lose all three of our essences, we will lose the game if we have no more to be drained. So just that's how we will lose. So it was, it's in my best interest to make sure I have Essence. It's in a greater best interest if I have Dark Essence. And that Dark Essence will allow me to, um, when the amal Amalgamator um, gets uh, uh, drains the Essence from me, I can give it Dark Essence. And again, that's how I win the game. If this one has, if this has two Dark Essences, I will win the game. Um, hopefully that all makes sense. This is a new adventure to me. I've only did a partial playthrough prior to this video. So anticipate mistakes. Anticipate me um, kind of cutting this up when I'm looking up the, the rules. There are specific rules to this adventure online. Unfortunately, it does not come in the box. Um, so you, you will have to either print that out or have it available on your computer. But anyway, I do want to get started and I hope you enjoy this playthrough. All right, let me just do one more shuffle here. Oh, and just so you know, I didn't explicitly mention it, but you do not forge keys with your amber. You get amber um, the typical way, but you don't forge your keys. I mean, the amber will basically come into play because of this mansion, because at the end of my turn, Gorman Guy steals one amber. So there you go. All right, let's deal six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then let's see what's in my hand. We have a watch your step, a fire spitter, glorious few, pandolf, the provoker, yanti ghost fin, and rant and rive. Okay, so these are all right. Um, I could mulligan if I want to, but I actually think this is not a bad you know, starting hand. So I'll go ahead and just keep this hand for now. Um, I was never really good at this game, just so you know, but hopefully <laughs> you get the gist of this adventure. And that's, that's my goal is so that you can understand, um, you know, for the most part, how, how this adventure plays and whether you think you might enjoy playing it yourself. Okay. So I will hmm. I will choose house uh, mm, yeah I think I'll I'll choose house Brobnar and I will play rant and rive I'll gain that um amber into my pool which i will have i guess i'll place it right here it has a play effect if your opponent has eight amber or more they lose half their amber rounding down unfortunately that won't do anything the other brobnar card i will play is fire spitter um it's a five one creature before fight deal one damage to each enemy creature i'll go ahead and play that into my battle line and that is all I can do on my turn. So I will ready my cards and then draw back up to, well, you know what? I could do an explore. I could use one of these explore abilities. Um, and you know what? Maybe I will. I won't end my turn just yet. I'll use the Endless Corridors um, Mansion Explore. It says discard two from hand and then I can play the top mansion card and then I'll flip this so I guess I could discard glorious few and 
<sighs> Let's see. Uh, Yanti Ghost Fin. I'll discard these two cards from my hand. I'll play the top card of the mansion. It says Unsolvable Puzzle. And it has an, an explorability that I can do. Enrage two of your creatures, then each of those creatures captures one amber from you if you do flip Unsolvable Puzzle. Okay, so I'll just have this out. Can't forget to flip the Endless Corridor. And now it becomes Strange Passages. It does have an explorer ability. If you have uh, more than three amber, you lose three amber. If you do play the top mansion card, flip this. So this will constantly just be flipping back and forth with a different cost to play a mansion card. Um, I'm guessing the mansion card will help me progress in my goal to get two dark essences attached to the um, amalgamator. Um, all right, and uh, I can't use the explore ability on grand stairway because it says if you are haunted and have three amber i don't and i'm not haunted haunted means you have uh, 10 or more cards in your discard pile and i don't have 10 or more cards in my discard pile i also don't have three amber so all right so now i'm ready my cards and then i'll draw back up to six so i got a rowdy scald i got a weak link baldrick the bold and then my last card feats of strength Okay, so another okay hand, I guess. So now we do the Gormengeist Mansion. It says at the end of my turn, Gormengeist steals one for each um, siphon in play. So there's one, so it's gonna steal one. I have to see um, what happens if it can't steal one from me. Okay, so I could be wrong, but I don't think anything happens if they can't steal from me. I think it's, it is just a guaranteed way that they would be um, uh, stealing Amber from me and slowing me down in some senses. Um, all right, so I also want to mention while I was looking in the rule book that the way that Essence ends up being drained is if Gormengeist gets six or more, well, I guess at, has at least six amber or the current key cost. Um, so uh, that's that's six right now. We haven't you know, had any cards that would change that otherwise. So when they get six, that means they will, um, at the end of their turn, they will siphon an essence from me. So that's something to note. Um, that's with the Grim Reaper, which says after reap, if Gormengeist, has um, amber equal to or greater than current key cost. It spends, uh, you know, uh, amber equal to the current key cost, then you drain one essence. So that's how that works. Um, I wasn't sure if that was clear, but now you know. Okay, so we've done that. And now it is the Gormengeist's turn. And on its turn, is actually going to just um, go through their adventure cards. So we'll just go ahead and look at the archive and do the first one. So this says Junk Restoration is going to gain an Amber and it's going to get another card into the archive. So put that right on top. It says uh, Junk Restoration Action fully heal each robot creature right now there's nothing to heal so i'll put that into this card we'll play the next card this is a, a creature thought catcher so we'll just put that exhausted into the battle line then this card says oh it gains another amber gets one more card in the archive this is energy vampire vampirism Action card, destroy each of your creatures with amber on it, and you may drain one in, in essence instead. I actually don't have um, any amber on my creatures, so I'm not going to do that. And then last card, hopefully, power supply. So this says, it's an item, each barricade gains plus two armor. You must pay one Huh, okay, you must pay one amber to explore an obstacle in addition to all other costs. 
Um, let's see. Um, I guess... So I don't know what to do with this artifact. I guess it's just here. Um, so I'll put, place it down here, out of the battle line. And it says each barricade gains plus two armor. I'm not sure what barricade is. I'm assuming it's a type of card of some sort. So I will just leave that as is and just hopefully it'll make sense later. <laughs> Alright, so I played the adventure card, so now we use the creatures. So uh, from left to right in this battle line, um, uh, I just, you know, go through and complete the abilities as needed. So this says, um, does not have the word prey. If it did have the word prey, it would fight and it would target, you know, um, something depending on what the prey action is. But in this case, it doesn't have prey. Um, although it looks like it might attack with an attack power, it is just, um, you know, a, a card that it will use to reap. So it's going to be exhausted and it's going to reap one amber. And then with that, it does have an after reap ability that we already are familiar with. But here it is again. If Gormengeist has amber equal to or greater than current key cost, which is six, it spends amber equal to current key cost. Then you drain one essence. So right now, it does not. It has four. So we're in good shape. And then that's it. It does nothing else to activate in terms of creature cards. Um, now we do the Gormengeist artifacts. They're used. I don't think there's anything here to do, so um, we'll go ahead and skip that. Now we ready all of the Gormengeist's card, cards, and then draw two adventure cards and put it in the archive. So we have two ready to go. Okay, so now it's back to me. And let's see what I've got in my hand. Um, weak link is a good one. So if I played weak link, I'd be able to make sure that Gorman guys will need 12 amber in order to drain essence from me. So I think I'll choose unfathomable, um, as my house this turn. So I will play, um, Weak link. I'll gain an amber with the bonus. And then it says upgrade. This creature gains while this creature is exhausted. Your keys cost plus six. So I'm going to go ahead and do put that on the Grim Reaper. And then what else? The only other card I can play for my hand would be the Watcher Step, which says choose a house on your opponent's identity card. If they do not choose that house as their active house during the next turn, make two token creatures and ready them. So that's a little useless here because they only have one house, which is Gormengeist. So I think I'll play this just for the Amber. And... Uh, yeah, that's that's what I'll do with those cards. In terms of exploring, um, I'll go ahead and, well, I had to pay an amber to explore because of the power supply artifact here. Um, and how many cards do I have in this card? One, two, three, four. So I'm not haunted yet. I can't do anything with the grand stairway. Hmm. I guess I can't explore. I don't I don't have anything that meets those exploration stuff. So you know what? I'm gonna have to just end my turn there. I'll draw up two cards. Got a jar Jarl's Fend and a Grand Melee. At the end of my turn, um Gorman Guy steals one amber her siphon in play and looking at everything I only have one still so now it has five okay 
So next turn, hopefully I'll be able to do get some creatures out, depending on... No? I guess regardless of which house I choose. Okay. Um, so next, we'll do the adventure card. So let's see what's here. The Harvest Skimmer. Um, if you're haunted, Harvest Skimmer gains prey. Okay, good to know. All right, so that'll come in here. And this card says Tribute Collector has an after reap ability. Okay. So we're getting tight here. I might need to move this off the play map, but we're, we're good for now. So now we'll look at the creatures. Um, it says uh, reap. So adding one here. Um, so again, it will actually need 12 amber to um, do its after reef reap effect. It currently does not have 12. Uh, this thought catcher will reap. Says after reap, discard one random card from your hand. If you are haunted, discard two random cards. So let me just kind of shuffle here. And I'll discard one card at random. Okay. Discarding Grand Melee. Um, and that is a good card to discard because it says destroy each creature that does not share a house with at least one of its neighbors and when it comes to the Gorman Geist, it shares a house with everybody. It only has one house. Um, now we'll use the artifacts, and there's nothing to do there. And I'll just ready all of their cards. Okay. My turn. I have five cards. Um, I think safe bet would be to do Brobnar. So I'll go ahead and choose Brobnar as my house. And let's see. Feats of Strength says for the remainder of the turn, each time an enemy creature is destroyed in a fight, make a token creature. Hmm, that's pretty good. But that's the remainder of the turn, and I don't think I'll be destroying much. I have a fire spitter that I can um, use, but I think. Um, I guess I might as well play it. I'll play it. So I'll play Feats of Strength. I'll gain an Amber from that. And then I will fight with Fire Spitter. So 5 1. Before fight, deal 1 to each enemy creature. So I'll put 1 damage on each enemy creature. And I'll be using dice to determine that. So 1, 1. One and one. And then after that, um, I'll be able to choose who I attack with. So I'm going to use Fire Spitter to attack. Um, Harvest Skimmer. So it has, it's going to have a total of six. So that will be it. The ties will be discarded. And then... It will also kill off my fire spitter because it had five attack. Well, actually, no, it won't because only four goes through. So it's going to have four damage on it, which is okay. So it's actually going to survive with four. All right. And because um, I did destroy a, an enemy creature in a fight, I can make a token creature. So I'll go ahead and do that. To do that, you just take the, the next card from your deck, put it face down, and this token creature in particular is a priest, and it's a 2-0. It has an action that says exhaust an enemy creature, if I were to exhaust a creature. Okay. Is there anything else? So this comes in exhausted. Alright. So I think that's all I've got. So now I'll play um, a draw Svend. A seven zero, and then I'll play a rowdy scald, and it's a four zero. So I've got that there. Um, explore. Still, don't think I can explore. I could do unsolvable puzzle actually, because I have more than uh, I have enough creatures now to enrage. So, 
Enrage two of your creatures, then each of those creatures captures one. You flip on some level. You know what? I'll do that. I'll enrage um, this token and um, this fire spitter. And then let's go into each capture an amber. And then I'll flip. Ooh, what is this? It says near future lens. It's an artifact. It enters play under my control. Cool. Look at the back of a mansion card in play or the back of the top card of the mansion deck. Oh, that's pretty neat. All right. So near future lens. I'll put that here. Um, it's peeking out here. Hopefully you can just remember I have this artifact. I'll be able to use the Omni effect um, on any turn. Um, okay. Oh no, wait, 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 wait. I don't have the amber to do it. I don't. Because I need to, because of this artifact, power supply, I would need to pay one. Um, but, actually, that just means I wouldn't be able to place an amber on one of these. Right? So I think it'll just be that. That's what I'll do. So I, I paid the one and then I can't actually capture one here. Um, I don't know if the ruling is that it had to come from supply at that point, but um, uh, I'll have to check on that later. So anyway, this is in my possession because I think I did pay for this ability. And yeah, let's ready all my cards and my battle line. Draw up. I have a Martyr's End, a Revered Monk. Lightbringer Outpost and a Might Club Artifact. Okay, wow. So I have a lot of Sanctum cards for next turn, I guess. Or I could I could I could, I could choose choose Robnor because I have a lot of creatures out too. I have to decide that. Okay. Um, end of my turn steals one for each i don't have anything for it to steal so that's that play adventure cards Ooh, i was supposed to put two here let's do that and then we'll play two so this is they gain an amber and then they also gain another card in the archive it says fully heal robot creature um heal each so that's all of these it's all gone, the damage. Not great. We have Call of Need. It gains another Amber. Play uh, Ready and Ward each robot creature. You may drain one essence instead. <sighs> Alright, I guess we'll ward them. One, two, three. And then the final card in the archive is a Thought Catcher. Another one. Okay, so that comes in exhausted. So now, um, let's see. Yeah, so now we go through the creatures. Um, the Grim Reaper is going to reap. And it's after reap effect. We'll have it drain essence if it has 12. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Not quite there yet. That's fine. We have thought catcher reaping. And discard one random card from your hand. If you're haunted, discard two. I don't think I'm haunted yet. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yep, not yet. All right, so let's discard just one card. Let's see what we get here. Okay, Baldrick the Bold is now discarded. And then we have this Tribute Collector reaping as well. Which means it definitely has more than 12. Um, and it says, after reap, discard two cards from your archive. I don't have any in my archive, so that's fine. Okay, so now we're ready all the cards. Alright. So, let's see. Guess. So, ward. I need to refresh myself on what that means. Um, so, let's see. Ward. 
Hmm. Okay, so um, ward is when a creature becomes warded, place a ward status counter on it. If a creature with a ward counter on it would be damaged, destroy or leave play. Instead, discard each ward counter on it. This prevents the creature from being tagged for destruction. Okay. So while a creature has a ward counter on it, it cannot be warded again. All right. So I think it's probably worth trying to get rid of those, but at the same time, hmm. Yeah, I think I need to just actually choose to use Brabnar. And with Enrage, I don't think that really means anything, but with Enrage, I think I have to attack with it if I can. So, and that's fine. I, I think my plan was to attack with it. Um... Yeah, so it says, while a creature is enraged, place an enraged counter on it, must fight when you use the animal. But it does get removed. Okay, so I'm going to choose Brabnar. And then I will... Can an enraged token happen more than once? I think so. So I'll, I'll do this. I'll do... Um, I'll just play this artifact called Might Club. Ready and enrage a creature. Cool. And that comes in exhausted. So I'll put it sideways. And then now, I think I'll just go ahead and... Hmm. Um, yeah, I'm going to attack with the fire, sp fire spitter. It has a before fight. Deal one damage to each enemy creature. So go ahead and do that again. So I'm going to... Well, actually, it's going to remove the ward, I think, for these three. And then it's going to hit one on this. Alright. And then the fire spitter will attack. And it's attacking... It's gonna attack the thought catcher and kill it. And then I'm also dead. And then this token will attack. And that is a 2 0. So it's going to attack 2 0 against the thought collector. And darn, it's not gonna do much there though. You know what? I'm gonna use it to attack this which will make it get two damage but it's gonna kill my token all right so jaros fend will also attack it says after an enemy creature destroyed fighting jaros fend make a token creature but jaros fend must survive the fight all right so i'll attack seven to I guess i'll do it to thought catcher is gonna die but it's doing four back um and so i'll put four damage on this survives so i'll create a token creature put it there and then rowdy scald will attack for four against the tribute collector and that will kill it even though it has two armor but um it does two damage to me actually Okay. Okay, so this dead. Alright. Is there anything I can do to explore? Um don't have amber to spend, so I don't think so. Alright, so that's that. I'll just ready everything. And then at the end of the turn, Gorman Guys would steal. I don't have anything for it to steal. Drop two. Fuguru and Skullback Crab. Okay, so now Gorman Geist will go and it's going to do the adventure cards. It has Shadies. It's a 5-0. It has Prey, so it's going to attack. And it has an after, after fight effect. And then we have Dark Lamp. It has a creature. 
<clears throat> that also has prep. All right, so that was a pretty simple um, adventure card phase. Now we'll go ahead and do the um, creatures. So the Grim Reaper will reap. And one more here. And after reap effect, it's gonna spend 12, which it can finally. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Now I have to give it an essence. So it says, um, then you drain one essence. So I, I have now drained this essence. And I guess I'll put it here. Um, it doesn't specifically say where to put it. I guess my drained essence would just go here, I guess. I don't know. I'll just place it here just in case. So that's done. And then these creatures just came in, so nothing happens there. Everything gets readied. And now I think it's back to me. Draw two adventure cards there. Man, I need to really start exploring or else there's just no point. Um, and I need Amber to do it. see here got a bunch of sanctum cards and then two unfathomable um you know poison sounds pretty good but i think i will do sanctum so sanctum will be the house for the turn um i'll play uh martyr's end it says, uh, I gain that bonus amber. Destroy any number of friendly creatures. Gain one amber for each creature destroyed this way. I'll destroy one, two. So I gain two amber. So now I have three. I will play a Lightbringer Outpost. Get a bonus amber. Put a friendly creature on the bottom. Okay, it's an artifact. It'll come in like this. And um, I guess I'll play Pandolf the Provoker. Play Enrage an enemy creature. So I also gain a bonus Amber there. And I'll Enrage. This one. I don't know if that matters. Um, and then, I guess, I'll play a revered monk, and it gets plus two armor for each of its sanctum neighbors. Do that. All right. Um... All right, so with that, I think I'll explore. I have to spend one to use an explore ability. And I'll lose three. One, two, three. Use the Strange Passages Explore, playing the top card of the mansion. Um, so this says, barricade, remove all damage counters from locked door, then flip locked door if destroyed. So now here's a barricade that gains two armor. Um, I guess armor, I don't think I have anything that shows that, uh, like token wise. So I'll just have to know that basically I need five to destroy this. And just so you know, anything with a power icon on it can be attacked with any of my creatures. It just won't get attacked back. So that's how I will, I will uh, hopefully get through the locked door. Right now I'll need five damage to do that. Okay. So that's all I can do for Explore, and I'll end my turn readying everything. Um, draw 
We got a glorious few, a press gang, cover this Hema. And lastly, the Grey Rider. And then we'll use the Gorman Guys Mansion's ability at the end of my turn. It steals one amber for each in play. I only have one for it to steal. Alright. So now we do the adventure cards here. It gains an amber. And says play, play the Grim, Grim Reaper from the Adventure Discard Pile or Purge Zone. It's already in play, so we're not to do, do that, but it does gain another card. Uh, Mimet is a 2 0. It says after reap, destroy one of your artifacts. Not great. We have this. Oh boy. Alright, another Amber. Another card in the archive. Attached to the Grim Reaper, the Grim Reaper gains after reap, discard the top card of your deck. Purge one of your creatures that shares a house with that card. Oof, okay. Have to remember that exists here. Okay. And then, let's see what this card says. It says, Ethereal Armory is an artifact. Um, each enemy creature gains splash attack too. No, that's terrible. Ugh, alright. So that's what they've got. Now we go into creatures. Grim Reaper will... Um, reap and it says discard the top card of my deck this brombar and uh brobnar i mean um and so that means i have to purge one of my creatures that share it and i only have this to draw sven so this is actually purged so that's that um i will also have to make note of um, this after reap, but actually it doesn't matter. I don't have 12. Okay, so Shadies, it says it's going to uh, prey on my least powerful flank creatures, attacking with 5. Enrage counter goes away. And the least powerful is going to be this one, I think. So it's going to die. But this gets 4 damage back. Um, actually, this gets 2, uh, two armor for each sanctum neighbor and has one so it would need six to die um so it's hitting me for five i have two armor so i take three so i put three damage here so i'm not quite dead um and then this one says if you're haunted which i think i am now one two three four five six seven eight nine ten yeah i have more than ten cards in this card so i'm haunted it says it gains skirmish all right, it says pray your most your most powerful flank creature. So it's going to be this one. It's going to hit me for four, um, but it does have two. Um, well, actually, this has taunt, so this should have been the one that was attacked before. So I think this would have three. And then right now, this is going to target um, this creature, I think. And so this will take four damage. Minus two is which is two, so it's gonna have two damage on it. Um, skirmish, what does that mean? So, skirmish says when the creature with skirmish is used to fight, it does not dealt any pending damage from the opposing creature. This applies only to damage that would be dealt by the creature's power. Oh, okay, that's fine, it's not taking any damage from me because that's skirmish. Um, all right. I think that's it but this one should have taken damage right um yeah so shady's would have taken four it doesn't have skirmish this one says gain skirmish okay so that's that and then the artifacts go each enemy creature gains splash attack too oh gosh so that means when this attacked this it did two damage to this that means it's definitely dead. Ugh. So that was pointless. That was pointless. Okay. All right. Um. So I don't think any splash damage was done to this one because the other one would have would not have attacked. And if it did attack, it would have attacked this. So this is dead as well. All right. Well, that was unfortunate. I have no creatures out now. 
Get ready is all the cards. And then it would be my turn. All right, well, I think I'll be ending the playthrough there. There's 45 minutes of gameplay for the um, Keyforge Adventures Fall of the House Gormengeist. I hope you were able to get just of this one. Um, did not want to spoil too many of the cards and hopefully you don't feel that I did. But um, if you're interested in seeing more of this, let me know. I'm going to try it with some other decks that might be more interesting. We'll see. But yeah, this was um, a pretty good playthrough. I did probably miss some things with the artifact cards. Um, as you can see, there's a lot to think through when you're playing this game by yourself. There's a lot to track. And um, so it's not it's not the most simple game to just set up and play. You do kind of have to be like ready to think things through and strategize, which um, actually reminds me a lot of Arkham Horror, this this type of format, which, you know, makes sense with the locations and and trying to flip things and and progress in the story almost. But yeah, I think if you like Arkham Horror, you would enjoy playing this this version of Keyforge. Um, my favorite way to play, play Keyforge is 1v1, 1v1, so I may not be playing this as often as, um, I would as a solo player, but playing 1v1 against another opponent is just really the most fun way to play Keyforge. But anyway, I'll stop rambling. Thanks for watching and see you guys around.